Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mini Intruder, and welcome to Stellaris, but not actually the same Stellaris we've been looking at so far on the channel, because this is Stellaris Console Edition, and uh, I find this game incredibly fascinating. There are so many big, interesting questions that this raises. So, this is the first time that Paradox has ever brought one of its big, grand strategy games over to console. So, uh, first up... Does it actually work in terms of controls? Stellaris, of course, built into the assumption you'd have a mouse and a keyboard. So you can precisely point at things and you've got drag and drop and you've got a keyboard with 10 million shortcuts and hotkeys on it. So can it actually work properly on a controller? And is there an audience for this sort of thing? Is the console market going to respond well to this and actually buy it? Because if it does sell well and there's actually a gap in the market here that Paradox is starting to fill, well... That raises all sorts of interesting questions, because yeah, there could be all sorts of fascinating grand strategy games that could move over to console. That could be really interesting. And thirdly, performance. I play Stellaris on a high-end PC, and by the end of the game, it is stuttering. Now, the Xbox and the PS4 are not as powerful as high-end PCs. I'm playing this on an Xbox One X, so I'm giving it the best chance it's got, but I'll be very, very interested to see what performance is like as well. There's so many interesting questions here. Let's dive in, because... Uh, this one's a little bit different, actually, yes. So, I've set up these lovely space otters, the Space Otter Citizen Union, because they are just utterly adorable, and they're going to help us through this lovely console edition of Stellaris. Now, eagle-eyed people who've played a bit of Stellaris may notice that, yes, we are selecting starting weapons, which is something we haven't done for quite some time in Stellaris, because this is not the same version as the PC version. That's up to version 2.2, but back at 1.7, the same time as the Utopia DLC came out, there was a point of divergence. That's where they handed the game over to start being converted to console. So this is playing by old 1.7 rules, which is why we're selecting starting weapons. These days you start with like the, um, the base of all the different weapon types. Back in the days of 1.7, you picked a particular weapon you were more interested in and kind of focused more in that direction, maybe diversified a bit more down the line. So we're back in time. But we're not, because you may also notice I'm not being asked to actually pick a method for moving around the galaxy. Back in 1.7, in the original Stellaris, you had to choose whether you wanted to warp or use hyperlanes or use the wormhole travel system. That is not in this, so this is not actually 1.7. Some stuff from the future has kind of been brought backwards, because this game works on a hyperlane-only system, very much like 2.0. So, some stuff's been brought backwards from the future, and some stuff from the past isn't there at all, because anything that was introduced by Leviathans, Utopia, Plantoids, the actual paid DLC is not included at this point. So, some stuff's missing, some stuff that probably shouldn't be there is, and I'm going to get very bloody confused. And you may also notice, the game features a significant reduction in the number of sliders, which basically means 0 out of 10, worst game of the year, because I like sliders. You may have noticed this, I like sliders in my games uh, quite a lot. Like, actually, I've probably got a problem with how much I like sliders. There are less sliders, it must be said. And this is part of the way that Solaris Console Edition doesn't cause your console to actually just burst into flames. You can't have a game on quite the same scale as you can on the PC version. So the largest galaxy now is 600 stars. That's up to 1,000 on the PC version. So you are playing with a smaller map. And the number of AI empires caps out at 10, which is again fairly on the modest side. Uh, just to kind of try and get the galaxy as busy as possible, as fast as possible, I whack all of those guys up to AI starts, and this one's interesting actually. Max Fallen Empires is at 3, so there's literally no way to force all the Fallen Empires in, so you never know quite what's actually going to be in the galaxy, which is kind of cool actually. I don't actually mind that. That's actually kind of fun. Uh, Habitable Worlds, you can still set. Everything else, you can't. Like, number of primitives, you can't change that. Air aggressiveness and difficulty. Uh, yeah, you know what? Screw it. We'll have that on insane. Why not? It'll actually just help the AI expand a little bit more quickly. So yeah, a busier galaxy will help us test how good performance is, which is very, very useful indeed. Empire placement random. I can be next to advanced neighbors. I hope so, because it's entirely advanced neighbors. Endgame crisis can be on. Yeah, you can't set the years of that, which is a bit interesting. So it is a much more restrictive game on the console. It's very much like there is a single experience and you will just have it that way. So... Uh, Bit of a shame that you've lost a lot of options, but I can understand why they would. So, this here is the entire galaxy. 
So next to the PC version, that is most definitely a little bit on the modest side. It feels very, very small to me because I'm used to always playing on a huge galaxy. And we are over here, and because we're playing by something that's pretty close to 1.7 rules, uh, yes, we're back to blobbing. So back in these days, you didn't just take systems one by one, you took like a single system with like a frontier outpost or a colony, and that created like a sphere of influence that let you capture systems all around it, which is why, yeah, we immediately start off with a big blob of space, and we've already got a few territories inside our empire. Flipping marvellous. So yeah, the way it basically works is one analog stick just kind of moves you up, down, left and right. The other one just moves the camera up and down and around. Zoom in and out with the triggers, which works pretty well. And then yeah, when you're actually floating over a system, click in on the right analog stick to actually jump into that and then jump back out again the same way. It actually works surprisingly well. I was surprised by it. I didn't think it was going to work as well as it does. But for the most part, it's pretty smooth. The only downside to it is... There's a lot of information on screen right now, because on a PC, you've got your PC normally set up on, like, you know, a desk. So you're very close by to the actual monitor. But here, in this game, I'm playing it on a TV. And, like, I sit slightly further back from a TV, because that's just how the room's set up. So, uh, it's a little bit of a large amount of information that's a bit far away from my liking. I think it could have done with a bit of UI scaling, but you don't actually have the option to do any UI scaling, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, the whole interface has been uh, redone to actually suit this. So what you do is use the D-pad to select a particular option. So say if you tap up on the D-pad, you go up to the menu at the top here, and then you can get some details on what your current income for energy credits, for minerals, for food, for influence, for unity, for the three different types of science and information about the size of your empire and your fleet. Tap B to come out of that and then tap say down and this is where technology lives. So if you've got to do technology you come down over here, tap left to go over to all the menus that always used to be over on one side as well. So actually technology is there as well but I think tech just comes down to... I'm not sure if tech's actually on the bottom. I think the bottom might actually be announcement. So tech does live there when it's actually prompting you to select new tech. But also any like alerts the game needs to flag to you, they'll be at the bottom as well. So we've got tech there as well together with cosmography. Very, very fancy indeed. Uh, society, people, all that business. And the outliner over here. The downside is, yeah, because I don't have a mouse, it's very hard to uh, click individual things. So if I wanted to like, you know, select a science ship over here, that's... That's tricky, because there's a lot of things kind of stacked up on top of each other, very close by to each other. So you absolutely do need to use the outliner. It's just a tap of right, select the thing you want to actually do something with, and then say, yeah, why don't you just go over there? And again, it's all got tabs, so there's actually give it commands, manage it in terms of, yeah, telling it to recruit a leader, what stance you should be in, all of that. And if it's part of a fleet, details of the entire fleet as well. So yeah, the whole thing actually works pretty smoothly. I've put just like a couple of hours into this just to get used to the basic controls. And uh, I was surprised by how well it all fits together. Still, as we're back in 1.7, as you may recall, you start off with your home system not actually being surveyed. So the first thing we need to do is just survey our home system just to get used to that. The other advantage we do have, however, is, uh, yeah, back in 1.7, they hadn't yet introduced the rule that only science vessels could go into unexplored systems. So if I just go over to my, yeah, my little starting fleet, I can basically just say, hey, can you guys just basically go around here and, like, find some stuff? That'd be fine. But just in case they run into anything bad, I'm going to put them into evasive, actually. If they run into anything bad, they should flee immediately. I don't want to lose these fleets too quickly. So they're going to get on with that. Construction ship doesn't have anything to do. What I probably will actually say is, Outliner, go over to Onota, the utterly wonderful homeworld, and then go over to Spaceport and just tell you guys to build one more science ship, please. Thank you. I do like having a second science ship immediately. Of course, alloys don't exist yet. Everything's being built out of minerals, but everything's under control and begin time ticking along. So yeah, time has uh, three settings, uh, the fastest, the slowest, the medium, and you can pause any time you want. Except one thing I have noticed, this is something a bit unfortunate. The game speed feels really, really slow. And I assume that's part of just kind of trying to get the game to actually just hold together because you notice straight away, we definitely don't have 60 FPS here. It feels like it's just kind of holding at a stable 30, but the game speed is extremely slow. So uh, this science vessel, is making its way over to that planet. So this is the default basic starting speed that this ship is moving at. Move that to double speed. 
it really does feel rather more like, yeah, the ships are just kind of crawling very slowly around the galaxy. So you're probably going to want to play this game on the highest speed all the time, but even then it is a slow process. And because the scanning actually happened so quickly, I think movement speed has actually been slowed down. I haven't looked into the mechanics of this, but it does feel like movement's just been slowed down a little bit. Though actually, before we actually crack on with that, there's probably something I can do over on the home world. And oh, blimey, there's... Okay, the homeworld makes a fair bit of noise when you're actually close by to it. I'm just going to back away into the nice, calm, quiet of space. That's lovely. Right, you. What do we need to do down here? Because, yes, we're back with the tile system at this point. So, uh, yeah, the uh, new pop system from 2.2 has been removed. Bit of a shame, to be honest. I think that was a real step forward, but I didn't mind the old tile system, so that's absolutely a okay. So, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of otters on tiles. The tiles saying what they're gathering. So, some are gathering energy, some are gathering food, some are gathering minerals, all of that good stuff. We've got more otters growing there. If I recall correctly, it was pops that actually determined, yeah, pops and technology that determined how big the blob around your planets and frontier outposts was. I think that's true anyway. So, uh, yeah, right now we don't have anything else we can really do with these guys because these guys aren't done growing yet. He's in a perfectly fine position. Once he gets a bit closer to being grown, at that point I'll just toss down a mine there and that'll be lovely. But there's nothing we need to do on this planet just this second. Right, new science ship finishes up here. So, yeah, no leader assigned. It gets a bit fiddly here. So, yeah, you have to go into uh, manage to recruit a leader, which I believe in these days cost... Yeah, that cost influence, so... Honestly, I preferred that system. Like, one of the things I did really like about Stellaris back in these days, because this is just really interesting for me, because I get to go back in time and basically play an older version of Stellaris. Older Stellaris, I think, did do some things better. Like, I prefer how influence worked back in these days. Because in New Stellaris, use influence constantly in the early game when you're expanding to lay down tiny little frontier outposts to take systems one by one. But by the late game, there's nothing to actually use influence on. Whereas in Stellaris back in these days, uh, yeah, all your leaders cost influence, so there was actually an ongoing need for influence to be spent. And more things had an influence upkeep cost. Almost nothing has an influence upkeep cost. In Stellaris 2.0 and 2.2. Aside, I suppose, from like diplomatic stuff, because I normally play as Xenophile, so I don't notice that so much. So maybe if you play a different ethos, you notice it a bit more. Anyway, we got lucky and got an archaeologist. Archaeologists are pretty decent, so he is now assigned to that. Beautiful. Come out of here and, yeah, give these places a scan because uh, there are some convenient worlds nearby. Yeah, we're back in time when the game would just auto-spawn convenient and highly compatible worlds close by to you just by default. There's nothing you can do about that, which is a bit of a shame. I do much prefer it in Stellaris these days where I can basically just say, hey, I want planets to be truly random, please. But yeah, back in these days, just by default, you always got convenient, completely compatible worlds right next door to you, which I never enjoyed, to be honest, but I guess I won't say no. Thinking about it, actually, the one thing I wouldn't mind is, yeah, a little bit of unity up front. So I'm just going to actually slap down an autochthonic monument over here that will suppress uh, one mineral on that tile, but screw it, I'd probably rather have that. Rushing a little bit of early game unity in order to get some traditions going on, not a bad idea because the tradition tree was very, very powerful back in these days. So, my science festivals are just having a bit of a scan right now and as well as that, construction ship, you probably can't afford to actually lay down, no, mining stations cost 90. So, uh, in a moment, I will let you do that. Not quite yet, though. Oh, and of course, you can actually just queue up actions as you ever used to be able to. There's a chain order command over there on X. So, I'm just going to uh, just chain the command for him to survey this system. And once he's done, he can just survey this system. And then go over to the other science ship. And he can do the same thing. And we've discovered alien life on Mindara 3. Yeah, that font feels a bit small to me and I can't change it. Like, uh, I very rarely need my glasses, but I really feel like I want to put them on on this occasion. Normally, I only put them on for small print on documents or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that's that's feeling a bit on the small side to me. That font could do with being increased, but there's no UI scaling options. So, we found an alien life form on one of the planets close by to us. It might just be animals. It might be pre-sentience. It might actually be a primitive race. We need to figure out what to uh, do with. So you're working on that right now. In fact, yeah, you're still scanning. So I'm just going to chain a couple of... No, no, chain survey. Chain survey, please. Thank you. Yeah, the pop-ups are quite on the aggressive side. They really do fill up the whole screen and make everything fade to black. And there we are. Simple forms of life. 
Okay, that probably means it was just a random animal or whatever. And you finish your construction queue down there. Yeah, I might change that setting. I think you can change the setting to be a bit less aggressive. It does get a bit up in your face. Uh, so, hang on. You, construction ship. So yeah, we just hover over here. Now you're selected and tell you to build a mining station, please. Thank you. Spot on. So... Now we can just check what's actually going on here. Tap B to come out of that. Tap B to come out of the outline of full stop. Then, okay, habitable world survey. Yes, that's commendable. Get on with it. In fact, you know, I'm just going to pause time for a second. Let's have a little look, see what we've got going on here. So, ooh, that's nice. A mineral three planet. Not bad at all. So, Miranda three. Have a little look, see what we got going on here. Ocean world. Obviously, otters love the ocean. Honestly, the deposits are a bit on the underwhelming side. The only nice thing is it does actually have some Batherian down in the bottom right there. A lot of empty spaces, though. A lot of empty spaces. Okay, worth having a think about, but I will need to research the tech in order to actually clear all that toxic kelp. Ah, yes, and be careful with anomalies if you're playing the console version, because, yeah, these days on PC, you can't die from failing an anomaly. It just takes longer. Back in these days, you could. So if that failure risk is too high, most definitely just leave it be for now. Do not just go directly to the sun, because you will probably die. And here we go. I'm willing to make a very temporary loss of energy to get some more uh, unity coming in. So you work right there. And the newly growing pop will be working in that power plant as soon as need be. So I've deliberately created an energy deficit there. But I'd rather have the unity because going up to the unity at the top there. That's basically like doubled the amount of unity coming in. Which will mean I can get the expansions a lot faster. Remember though, no DLC. So while we do have unity in traditions, there are no ascension perks unfortunately. In fact, I'm going to be honest here, if you played the PC version, you probably feel this version is a bit on the empty side. Just because, yeah, when we take away a lot of stuff we've probably been taking for granted, because it's been in the DLC for so long. We've lost mega structures, we've lost ascension perks, we don't get the leviathans, we don't get any robot empires or robot planets, we don't get mega weapons, there's no trade. I'm not sure if there's war in heaven. War in heaven was... Was Warren even part of Leviathans? I think it wasn't actually Utopia. I think that might have been introduced by Leviathans. I can't recall. But I think we don't get that either. Because I'm pretty sure that was paid DLC. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that is missing here. Now if you've never played Stellaris before, that's not going to be a problem. Because I think the base game's a really enjoyable introduction. But if you're a PC player who's used to all that stuff, you will probably feel its absence. Okay, and we've got confirmation what's going on in the other planet on the other side over here on Wasat 1. It's a small, uninteresting world, uh, no major deposits, so we definitely don't want to settle that. Now, honestly, I don't really want to settle here either. This was the problem of the old system in Stellaris, where when you actually laid down a world, it created a blob of influence. It was a real disincentive to bothering to settle the world right next to where you started, because you'd basically be getting no real benefit out of it, but it would still fill up your core system cap, which I believe back in these days was a hard cap. So, yeah, that was a bit of a problem. You didn't really want to go doing that. Instead, you wanted to settle somewhere like, say, maybe over here, where you'd get all these systems, or like, you know, this system would be great, you'd probably get like, all of these, uh, then you could like, you know, fill in the gaps slowly over time, because these borders as the game progressed would just get wider and wider and wider. So, while this is a lovely world, it's not exactly the world I want to take. This world over here, however, this could be a bit more on the interesting side, so, my little scouting party of Corvettes has found... Uh, Welcome to, and it is size 19. Not terrible, don't know too much about it. This is why I wanted two different science vessels. I never bothered researching tech, did I? Have we just spent the last year and a half not researching tech? That's totally what we've done, yes. Okay, we should probably start doing that. So, more power for my ships, please. And you guys, naval capacity 10%. Ooh, growth speed up by 10%. That's very useful, nice and early on. And Corvette Assembly Yard Spaceport Level 2. Get on with that as well. Right, you guys do that. Next time, if I forget to assign tag, get on with it. Right, sorry, it's because I'm used to seeing that flashing up in the top. Now it's down at the bottom. I overlooked it. It's also very small. It's very small and out of the way. You should have been flashing at me, damn it. So you, once you're done with Wasat, head over here 
and actually, yes, yeah, survey this system straight afterwards, if you'd be so kind. Uh, meanwhile, this other science vessel is just over here checking out these systems. So yeah, one science vessel just basically scans the local area, while the other one goes out looking for our first colony. So we'll see if the actual Corvettes find anything useful up north. After they're done with that, I'll send them back down over here, just to have a little look, see if there's anything good floating around this part of the world. Picking your first colony is pretty important, but to be honest, I probably wouldn't want to get it set down right away, because it's quite on the expensive side, so I need some basic infrastructure. I think it was... Hang on, how many minerals was it back in these days? It was probably about 300 or something, right? And 350. So... I don't have that many minerals yet. I need to get some basic infrastructure set up. I've been quite lucky here so far, to be honest, because there's a bunch of mineral producing systems right next to me. Also, give it the beginning of next month, and there's 99 minerals. So now, my construction ship, I would like you to build this particular mining station, if you'd be so kind. Plus three minerals a month will actually be a very, very nice increase. And once you're done with that, maybe get a little power platform down around Mindara 5, because we are losing energy every month right now. Situation log updated. Oh, but we've potentially got, hang on, we've got aliens here. What's going on? Enigmatic spacefarers. What are they precisely? Are they... That is mollusks, I believe. I think that's mollusky type ships. Hang on, no, we're mollusky type ships. That's... I can't remember. It's an actual other space race anyway, so we've actually got a space race going on here. Marvellous. We should probably investigate those guys, see who they are and see if they're friendly. This hasn't changed at all, by the way, in the new Solaris. This has basically been the same since version 1.0. When you find new aliens, you can't speak each other's language, so you just tell your sociology lads to spend five months figuring it out, and they do, and then you can chat with each other. And it's worth doing, because it gives you influence. And in the early game, influence is what you need to be laying down new planets and frontier outposts, so it's very, very valuable. So they'll just crack on with that job done. But yeah, they are all the way up here. Which is maybe a bit worrying, because that would suggest that probably they're somewhere around here and exploring downwards. Together with the fact that, yeah, we've actually found a good planet over here. Is it a decent sized planet? That looks tiny to me. Generally, yeah, the size of the planet doesn't pack. Ooh. Gaia world, you say? Okay, it would be remiss of me not to come and scan that Gaia world, I think. In fact, you know what? You... Come up here and do that right now, because I think there might be more competition for this world than there is for this one round over here. But here we go, we've got options here. This is good, I like this. I'm just going to send my other science ship just to basically explore down the south here, just to see if there's anything showing up in terms of good world. So, yeah, my science vessel already actually gets there. Yeah, warping around is very fast, but sublight speed seems to be insanely slow. So I'm not sure if that's actually going to affect how war goes. Uh, by the way, you've leveled up, which is great. And I have got myself a beautiful, beautiful tradition to take. And you most definitely want to be taking expansion first. It's always a good one to take first. So crack that open because, yeah, back in these days, expansion was even better because Frontier Outpost being 50% cheaper was huge for locking down a bunch of space nice and fast. Also, yeah, reach for the stars, meaning you can actually settle far away systems, nice and easy too. Capital buildings producing additional unity. Tradition cost increase for expanding fast down 33%. Pop growth speed increase by 10%. Like, basically every single one of these was a massive winner. This was a great tree. So, we've got ourselves our first friends, hopefully. The Zimmerpuck Corporate Alliance, who are not a megacorp, despite being called a corporate alliance, because those didn't exist right now. Get myself 40 influence from a trouble, and you guys are militarist and materialist and a little bit egalitarian. Now, I'm actually militarist and egalitarian, so... I feel like, actually, me and these weird decorative worm-winged creatures we could be friends. And we immediately figure out where they are. So they're up there right now, and they've taken the easy option of immediately settling the world next to them. Actually, they probably haven't, because they've probably just had an advanced start, so they're just allowed to do that. Luckily, they've decided to not actually close their borders to me, which is very convenient, because that's where my fleet is right now. So what else do we actually need here? Oh, hello. We do actually have something that might be of use. Uh, this system right here... Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Big world. And, uh, okay, it's not ocean, it's continental, but decent size. Uh, you know what? 
you stop doing your moving around for a second here. Instead, just uh, give this place a bit of a scan. And we do have visibility of the Gaia world too. So, it's not huge, but it is a Gaia world. And there's plenty of food on it. Plenty of minerals too, actually. Oh, go on. I can hardly say no to a Gaia world. So that means we probably want to start saving up to go in that direction. If we want to start saving up to go in that direction, that means, hang on, once you're done with that, I need you to just go around here and, uh, yep, survey that system, survey this system as well. Just figure out what's going on in this part of the world. Now, this energy situation is getting a little bit out of hand, so yeah, you just get a mining station around that world in order to just get yourself a little bit more energy. But yeah, look at that. This is max speed. This is how fast a construction ship moves at max flipping speeds. That has most definitely been uh, slowed down a little bit to help the game not grind to a halt. So now the race is on to get 350 minerals to settle a world as soon as possible. But we've also got a faction. This is probably a good thing, to be honest. So these guys are military dominance over the rest of the galaxy. If they got founded first, that probably means they're already pretty happy with us and fairly populous. I'm egalitarian, so I get more influence out of factions. And you do need a lot of influence in this game. And it stays useful throughout. So, alright, let's just head over to factions here. See if I can help cheer these guys up a bit. There's not a huge amount I can do to make these guys cheer up, unfortunately. Because I think I've already got Unrestricted Warfare on. I'll double check that in a second, but I'm pretty sure that's actually already on. Subjugating, it's going to take a while to do that. I don't have a fleet right now. I will totally expand my borders when the opportunity presents itself. And uh, yeah, I can also just not join a federation. Fine, no problem at all. Now as for the Zemapux, for the time being, yeah, we have the same authority, free egalitarians, all of that good stuff, so uh, they're fine. And the Empire believes we are weak and need their protection, but they seem to like me, which is good. So that is very, very nice indeed. That's a good starting point. They're not planning to murder me. Though apparently they're also guaranteeing my independence, which is... Quite frankly, generous. Marvellous. Well, I don't want to go to war with them, so let's actually form a non-aggression pact right now. That doesn't have an influence cost, it just makes trust go up, which is useful, in case I want to have a defensive pact with them later. Because, of course, everyone in the entire galaxy does actually have, uh, yeah, superior size to me right now, because I gave everyone an advanced start. So, uh, there's no guarantee there's not, like, you know, some form of fanatical purifier just around the corner. And there we go, they're totally on board with non-aggression pact, be flipping beautiful. The energy situation is starting to worry me, so I've got plenty of food right now. So I'm just going to move one of these farmers uh, down over to the actual power plant just to sort that out. These guys will have grown soon enough as well, this should be fine. Okay, our friends to the north appear to have expanded again. Yes, that's actually a proper colony down over there. What sort of atmosphere do you guys like? Okay, they like cold, which means, well... They're not going to be in a rush for our kind of temperate planets, but they probably wouldn't mind having access to this here Gaia world. And there's nothing to stop this border expanding into the Gaia world. So I might be about to lose the Gaia world purely because I can't lock it down in time, which would be a bit of a shame. They want a research agreement. I'm fine with that because their tech's probably ahead of ours because... I forgot to research new tech for a year and a half, and they're getting massive bonuses to their tech. So that is worth doing. Yep, lovely. But yeah, there is a real risk that this system will just expand at some point and just eat the Gaia world. The only way I could stop that happening for certain is to actually lock down that system with a frontier outpost right now. Because that world's still going to be growing for some time, actually. Yeah, colonization's going to take them until... About a year from now. So there's plenty of time for me to just lock down this station with a frontier outpost. And then I can just replace that and step it down later. Okay, before we do that, let's actually just check what's going on over here on this world. No, 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 not like that. Like this. So there's this world right here, which is not bad. Not bad. I tell you what, why not flipping both? Right, okay, a construction ship. As soon as you're done with... Ooh, how long is that going to take you, what you're building right now? I don't think that's going to take you long. So once you're done with that, move up here if you'd be so kind. That is going to take, ouch, 200 minerals to lock this place down. 
I'll tell you what, I'll move you in that direction. I'll make the call if I want to do that afterwards. Oh, and new traditions come in and it is just in the nick of time. Because, yeah, Frontier Outposts are officially half distance away. Take that immediately, because that means that my construction ship that is right now soaring in to lock down that Gaia world will need to spend a lot less influence to do it. Situation log updated. We've also got new aliens showing up here. Hang on, what is going on? Oh, a hostile fleet. Whoa, 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 just to slow down a second here. Slow it down, Billy. All right, just a bunch of space amoeba. Nothing we can handle right now, but not a disaster either. And it looks like you are going to uh, get away without actually running into trouble there. Lovely. Okay, what we've got confirmed over here is, yeah, there's actually a seven mineral system right here in Hunter. That's pretty valuable, and the Gaia world's just too sexy for me to ignore, so I'm going to lock this place down. I think they've got a ship floating around here too. Just a science vessel. They're scanning it. They don't know about any of this yet. So, you, my good man, I would like you to lock this down. And look at that. 65 influence now. Still 200 minerals. This is going to slow down the colonization a little bit, but it's probably worth doing. I kind of miss Frontier Outposts as an idea, by the way. I mean, technically, I know, like, now everything's a Frontier Outpost. But it was kind of fun back in the old days to just be able to slap down something that just basically laid claim to a vast amount of space. But it did cost you a lot of influence to do. It was a fun thing. I mean, I understand why they changed over to the system where now, like, it's a whole bunch of tiny Frontier Outposts. And you take over systems bit by bit. Because it got rid of the kind of the slight madness of border pressure where sometimes systems would rapidly change backwards and forwards you'd have no way of knowing whether you were going to be able to hold a system or not in the long run but you know what i do kind of miss it throwing down an aggressive frontier outpost just to screw over your neighbor was fun damn it that border is starting to expand faster and i'm starting to get worried because i can't remember what happens if you're midway through building a frontier outpost when the boards of another empire eats that territory. Does it just get cancelled? Because I can't remember whether it just gets cancelled. And if so, we're in a race up to almost 40%. But the borders are going up here. Yes, new research, please. That's probably a good idea. And Pither and Dust, I believe, is strategic resource for bonus food. So get that underway. That's a bad selection, though, to be honest. I will say, though, this little bit of space down here, close by to that bigger world that arguably was a bit more interesting, yeah, that's actually pretty sexy too. That's a really valuable system over here. Bunch of energy, bunch of minerals, not a terrible hall of science either, to be honest, and that's more science done right over there. There's one world that I may or may not be interested in right there. Hang on. Small jungle world. Honestly, I can probably do without. Here's what we want. Powered exoskeletons. Minerals plus 5%. I do need minerals right now for the expansion. Get everyone in adorable otter exoskeletons so we can expand more quickly. And come on, little construction ship. You're almost done. Lock that bit of space the hell down. It needs to belong to me, damn it, though. This is going to lead to some border tension. Yes. Yes, it will. Oh yeah, that bit of space down there, that's really nice actually. Eight minerals right there, six energy, five minerals right there. Haven't even scanned those two systems yet. Yeah, we'll totally get that world down afterwards. So we'll have three worlds down very, very soon indeed. Construction complete. Oh, there it goes. There it flipping goes. Construction complete indeed. And your borders can just naff the hell off. This bit of space belongs to me actually. <laughs> Nice. Very, very nice indeed. So now that bit of space is locked down until I can get a colony down, at which point I can probably make that station stand down. Because the station does have, yeah, a decent amount of upkeep. One influence per month. Though I can reduce that to 0.5 with another tradition tech, which was very, very valuable indeed. Tradition has always been the thing to take first, but I think back in these days it was even more so. So, okay, we've locked down this bit of space, which is marvellously good news. Also, I have just remembered something, which was this was back in the days when we did have consumer goods and living standards, but back when they were basically broken, because egalitarians had a ludicrous advantage here. Hang on, let's see if I can actually still do this. Here we go. So the altars have decent living standards right now, but what I can do is, yeah, because I'm actually egalitarian, whack them up to utopian abundance for happiness plus 20%. 
That does mean they need to eat more consumer goods, which was just in the form of minerals. But here's the thing, the happiness gets converted directly into bonus production in a very generous rate. So right now we're making plus 16, yeah, minus 2, plus 16, plus 2. So I'm just going to move over to Utopian Abundance right now. So that is now... Okay, that's minus 1 plus 12 plus 2. So we've made a very slight loss right now. I was expecting to make a profit, but I think that's because, yeah, right now we've got a lot of stuff floating around in space. The number of actual people we've got isn't actually that high. Maybe that's been slightly rebalanced because I swear, back in the old days of Slurish, you used to be able to whack people over to Utopian Abundance and basically you'd immediately benefit. So I think what's going on here is, yeah, we are making a net gain in energy there. That went from minus two to minus one. And that's because a lot of our energy is being produced by people. We've got multiple power plants and also the capital there. Uh, in, yeah, one in from the top and one in from the left. That's the capital building, that one. Whereas the minerals we've got coming in are mostly coming off mining platforms for the time being. So once we actually get a few more mines down, like those mines up in the very top left, we'll probably be about neutral on minerals, will be beneficial in terms of energy. So uh, this is probably all going to work out. And once you get more people down and more and more planets, it gets better and flipping better. More aliens as well. Hang on, what actually are all of these? This is... Ooh. Hello. What are you? Oh, that's... That's a lot of pirates, actually. Okay, so we've just found uh, a big old collection of pirates. Won't be able to deal with them anytime soon. Leave them be for now. So that's just down over here in the Shadow Nebula. Leave them be. They probably won't cause trouble for us. Just double check how these guys feel about us at the time being, by the way. Yeah, there's now border friction because we threw down that frontier outpost, but they're still fond of us for the time being. This is fine. They have, however, closed their border to somebody, so me and these guys get on, but they've got a neighbour we don't know about yet who they don't like. Right, let's see if they're willing to actually trade information here. I would like to trade star charts for star charts, please, because I believe that's how you trade contacts back in these days. Here we go, 11 minerals actually buys us the right to know who their neighbours are. So let's just swap information please. Actually, okay they've accepted but I can't see. Okay maybe you couldn't swap comms back in these days. Maybe I'm misremembering because that's a thing you can totally do in the future but maybe you couldn't do it back in these days. Also apparently I've been looking at the galaxy at a slight angle this whole time. Which I didn't realise. I thought I was looking at it like you know straight like this. But no, apparently the correct orientation of the galaxy is like this. So I guess that's how it's going to be from now on because we do want the cute little otter face to be the right way up, yes. And here we go, one colony ship, spot on. Gonna take a few months to complete that though and actually once it's done that is gonna cause a massive energy deficit. Putting down colonies back in these days was expensive energy wise. So Okay, we might want to, yeah, try and throw down an extra. There are no more power plants we can throw down. Okay, but if I were to remove some of these blockers, then I could. Yes, spot on. Good, get working on that. That'll be done in just three months. Get a power plant down, which should help deal with any problems. But yeah, right now I'm making a, I'm making a big surplus of food. In fact, I think, yeah, back in these days, uh, there was a policy for that, wasn't there? Food used to be a bit weird back in these days. Ah, yes, I remember how this works. So right now the food cap's 200, but because we're at the food cap, growth is actually sped up. But it means if you run into trouble, you've got less reserves. Okay, that actually wasn't a bad system. I'll leave that how it is for the time being. There we go. Tile block has been got rid of. We've got comms with the great Tebadorans. Hello. Who are you guys exactly? Slaving despots, xenophobes, authoritarian. Probably not going to enjoy our company, to be honest. So we send our regards. Please don't enslave us. And also, here's a new power plant because we are very, very desperately low on energy right now. So that would probably be a good sort of a thing to do. Here we go. This will be the guys that, yeah, the Zimmer Pucks have decided to actually close borders with. That we can actually verify that nice and fast. So, contacts, you guys. No, you've closed borders to someone else as well. Right, we don't know who those guys are. Gotcha. That's low risk. You can just get on with researching that. These guys have expanded a lot, by the way. 
an awful lot and immediately close borders. Are we at any risk of... No, I don't think we're at a risk of actually losing any territory to these guys. This should be fine. Oh yeah, we've got uh, we've got some problems here with the energy situation. Okay, um, abandon the food thing. Don't worry about food for the time being. Actually, we probably need... Yeah, do just abandon the farms for the time being. You, move down over here. We're still losing energy, but it's only one energy. It's probably not as bad as it could be, to be honest. But yeah, we need that colony ship. Ooh, the Shining City. That's a lovely name for a colony ship. Right, we need to get this world down, like, as soon as flipping possible, please. So, you get down over here. That's only 30 influence. Yeah, get it flipping done. And we would like the base to be... Ooh, where? Because, yeah, it provided adjacency bonuses to... I believe to the base resources of minerals, food, and energy, not to science. So, here would be nice because it would pass on adjacency bonuses in all the different directions, but then I'd be covering up a really nice tile, which is a bit of a shame. Um, actually, I'll put it down right here, because there's a two, there's another two, and there's another two. So, as soon as we can actually get those mountains out of the way, that'll be worth doing. So, there we flipping go, and no, I don't think we're going to call it that. This is a Gaia world, damn it. There we go. Otter perfection. Now, let's see if these guys are maybe interested in trading a bit of energy with me. Which they may or may not be. Honestly, they consider energy apparently quite valuable. Okay. How do you feel about monthly minerals? Actually, that's pretty good. I think I should probably do that for the time being. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should hold off for now. Hold off for now, but... How much energy would you be willing to just sell me in one go just for the sake of tidying me over until I figure out how much I actually need? Honestly, you don't seem to actually value it that highly. Okay, this works for me. If I wanted to... Oh, you're not interested in buying minerals, apparently. Doesn't want to trade away monthly resources for instant transfer. Oh, well, I almost gave you that. So, yeah, quite frankly, thank you for pointing that out to me. Otherwise, I'd have given you a really good deal. All right, looks like the best deal I can do is, yeah, 74 minerals for 112 energy. Get it done just for the sake of keeping us going. There we go. So they've just let us survive for at least a little while. The energy crisis is a bit on the excessive side right now but as soon as we've actually got a world down we should be okay it's just colonization is uh, energy intensive okay new tradition so i could get that frontier outpost a bit cheaper on the old influence but no we're about to actually be taking that thing down instead uh, capital buildings now producing yeah additional unity more unity would be good that'd be very very good indeed plus pop growth speed on the way i'm already getting two pops for every new colony because i've just actually opened the expansion tree pretty happy with all of that also i seem to have run into something out there oh i've run into a stagnant ascendancy hello there fallen empire uh respect our authority or us oh don't say that no, definitely don't say that. Just say, like, hi. Okay, so apparently one of our neighbours is a xenophobe fallen empire, which is, you know, always flipping good news when that happens. All right, colonisation is now underway of otter perfection. That is going to eat energy for a while. Yeah, two whole years of energy being eaten. But the deficit isn't so bad. And better and better, uh, you little construction ship... Get down that mining station. That will slow that down because that's an energy mining station right there. In fact, we've almost got a new otter coming in over there. So that's actually a good mineral spot. We do need to get a mineral network down. We don't actually have the money for that yet. And when we do build it, we won't have the energy to run it. But minerals will let me buy more energy going forward. It'll probably be worthwhile. Also, I think I just interrupted two space whales having sex. So that's... That's probably bad. Okay, no, stop, stop, what, guys? Who just died? Please run away. Where's the flipping ship? Okay, good. My science ship got away before the angry, horny space whales killed it. So, that's fine. Everyone, remember, stay out of this sector up here. Angry, horny whales. And we have managed to just about stabilise on the energy front too, thanks to throwing down those extra mining platforms. So I'm a bit worried about Itraben right there. It is possible 
that, yeah, the Zemma Puck to the north will just at some point exert enough pressure, just because they've got more planets than us and probably more tech than us, to actually push us out of that system and officially take possession of it, which was a thing that could happen a lot back in these days, which was fun when you were doing it and incredibly frustrating when it was being done to you. Okay, more energy can be thrown down over here to offset. I assume that's the new... Yeah, that's the new mine. So minerals have never been better. Everything else looking a bit on the dicey side. Also, apparently the space piracy now, which is concerning. Do we know where the space piracy is? Also, the slaving despots have offered to become my overlord, which feels like the sort of thing you shouldn't accept, because I feel like that's just a polite way of saying we're going to enslave you now. So no, go away. And in addition, they're, they're also declaring us rivals while asking us to actually submit to them. So, dear oh flipping dear, I feel like me and the Zemapucks could potentially, yeah, come up with an agreement that those bastards need to be taken care of. You see, the problem I've actually got here is Auto Perfection has basically no energy on it. And if I recall correctly, the fleet has apparently been repaired from the, yeah, the angry horny whales. Good, good. If I recall correctly, this world I want to settle down here, there's a bit of energy, but it's not much at all, really. It's very low on the old energy. Right. Perfect world. Though, actually, there is a bunch of energy around here. It's not huge amounts, but the six might keep us going. I do need to find an energy world at some point. I can't remember if this was before or after the days when... In fact, does this even still happen? At one point, there was like an announcement in a dev diary. They were going to make like different climates more or less likely to have certain things in them. Like I believe hot planets were energy-ish. And like there was lots of food and science on temperate worlds and lots of minerals on cold worlds. Am I making that up? I swear that was true at one point, but I can't remember if it ever actually made it into the game at any point. Oh, and there's the pirates, by the way. So, how strong are you guys? Okay, four Corvette, strength 122. So, in other words, nothing we can do about that. Right, leave and be. We're just going to have to leave and be for the time being. And we need to spend some money training some new stuff. Here we go. Get two new Corvettes into production, please. And on top of that, we could probably do with a flipping Admiral. So, who have we got as available options here? Ooh, Gale Speed and only 38 years old. Yeah, Evasion Up, Sublight Speed Up, Combat Speed Up. Flip and do it. Get him on board. Lovely. Now we just need to wait for those new ships to show up. And then we can take out these guys. Because, uh, ooh, was this back in the days when everyone just fought to the death before everyone started just warping out all of the time? I think it was, you know. This was back in the days when, yeah, wars were just decided in a single battle. Because when your doomstack ran into their doomstack, it was just whoever had the biggest doomstack. War is definitely a lot more interesting these days, but it was certainly more hardcore back in 1.7. So these guys have just basically decided to... Yeah, they've blown up one of my space stations... Where are they going next exactly? They're, they're warping out somewhere. But do we actually know where they're going? They're moving to Withril. Okay. Uh, wait, where's... Where's Withril and how are you going to get there? Ah, it's all the way up here. Gotcha. Admittedly, there's, there's nothing in Withril. So I guess you can have it, to be honest. And I don't currently have visibility of Withrow, so I don't actually know where they are. They're probably heading up to the north of the Empire right now. There's a handful of things I'd rather they didn't blow up there, but here we go. I've actually got my fleet ready to go, so I'm going to deploy the fleet in this direction. My fleet should have the manpower to deal with that. We outnumber them, we've got an admiral, they don't. So I'm just deploying my fleet to go and hunt down these pirates. Hopefully, that will work out. Here we go, solar panel network. Very, very useful thing to actually have on all of my ships. Very useful indeed. So uh, we'll get that into production because that's a bit of free energy I can have nice and early on. Oh, I forgot to change my fleet stance. Hang on. No, guys, guys, you're not actually supposed to be evading the hostile fleet. Your job is to, like, fight them, actually. So, yes, um, please go and, and murder, murder the fleet, actually. You guys, like, come over here. Are you willing to not flee? Now I've changed your orders. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Now, slight problem. These guys have built a base, which actually has... 
yeah, that's actually got some level of strength as well. And auto perfection is down. Right, you guys, just hang out right there. Oh, and now we've got a massive energy surplus because, yeah, colonization is really expensive to do. Right, okay. So, auto perfection is starting off very nicely here. Oh, look at that. Sexy as anything. So, priorities, priorities, and priorities. Obviously, we want to get, yeah, basic mine built right there. I know that's going to actually get that food out of the way. Doesn't matter. And then you build a basic hydroponics farm right over here as well. Spot on. That flipping works for me. You move down over here for the time being. We'll get some adjacency bonuses nice and quickly. This should work out well. And yeah, the two guys to the north have declared rivalry. This works for me because, hang on, I've decided that you are going to be my rivals because then I'll have a common rival with the Zemmer Pucks to the north. So screw you, that's bonus influence for me anyway, which is good. And now these guys are up for a defensive pact. Better and flipping better. So that is going to cost us influence, but I'm also gaining influence for being a rival. This is probably a good idea right here. So we know they'll say yes to that because it works in their favour. And now I have got some more powerful friends to the north. Spot on. Oh, and we most definitely have to prioritise, yeah, getting some of the actual tile blockers out of the way. Because right now we've got no pop growth at all on our actual home world. You research that. Yeah, food. We are lacking in food right now. Now we've got two colonies. We're going to start growing twice as fast. So as soon as I've actually got some more flipping minerals in, I will actually get rid of that immediately. We can start new pops growing. There we go. And spot on. Clear. Thank you. Also, the pirates are dead because the Zemmer Pucks decided to send a fleet of about a thousand strength down to just murder them for us. Thank you. Okay, so with auto perfection down, that means we should now be safe to actually, yeah, take this thing down. Because that's a little bit on the expensive side, this here platform. It's... How much does it actually cost me? Maintenance is, yeah, look at that. Three energy a month and one influence a month. That is uh, very, very nasty indeed. So that thing, we are now going to disband it. There we go. Disband that station. That's now been removed. And that's probably going to mean my borders actually get suppressed a tiny bit. Yes. Have we actually lost? Have we lost that? I think we might have just lost that. But as auto perfection grows, it will exert a bit more pressure. So probably that'll be okay. Right. Now we might actually need auto perfection to, yeah, just temporarily stop the problems we've got with famine right now. So move an otter up to that farm right there, which is beautiful. How long do we can upgrade this, by the way? Uh, what's the problem with upgrading? That is five pops and also 350 minerals. So not just yet. And back over here, yeah, we can actually build more farms too. So build hydroponics farm one. Spot on. Need a little bit more in the way of minerals just for the time being. Come on, anytime you're flipping ready. Actually, wait, hang on. I was looking at food, not minerals. We're fine for minerals. Oh, and here we go. Destroyers, spaceport level two. If we might end up in a war with the stupid rhinos, then having some destroyers to take care of their corvettes, that could be just the thing. And here we go. New life. Pop growth speed up. Colony development up by 50% as well. Will be useful in future. Spot flipping on. Yep, that system is officially now inside Zemmer Puck space right there. Fascinating. So, yeah, we still have this area over here, however. So, yeah, there's plenty of minerals we can harvest right now. I think, actually, if we just actually slap down a whole bunch of mining platforms, we can start getting a good mineral income going on there. Okay, so, the state of play. I've decided my science is falling behind, so I'm throwing up some lovely little research platforms up in the north, which is going to significantly speed up my physics research just by studying a bunch of stars or whatever. Situation on the uh, home world is uh, looking decent, slowly getting rid of the tile blockers. That's going to be full up in no time whatsoever. In auto perfection, meanwhile, I do actually have a spare power plant. I should probably start using... Not immediately, but when you are done, you can start working on that. Bit more science coming in over there as well. We don't need all of this food, but I do have spare food here in case I need it. 
And here's interesting, I need to remember, of course, yeah, all of the local edicts are different back in these days. So 135 influence gets me building costs down and building speed up. Worth considering if I was going to build a whole bunch of stuff in a row. Okay, I've got the money for it. B to Kylie, I'm going to try and settle down over there as well. Get my third planet onto the map. And on top of that, yeah, hopefully I should have enough energy left over that even though there's going to be a deficit will be settled by the time that deficit actually eats up the reserves. Hopefully, that'll all work out fine. And don't forget, solar panel networks all over the shop if that's what I need. Another plus three energy right there, so I might actually get that down once I've actually got the colony ship out. That'll be fine. So that's actually in position over there, and... Ah, wait, hang on. Back in these days, you had to actually choose to build a little kind of space platform thing, didn't you? Yes, yes you did, right. Right now, Auto Perfection doesn't have one. You need to actually opt into that, and it costs money. I'd forgotten that for a second there. Now, I can't help but notice that, yeah, over in this part of space, there's actually just some decent mining. I don't really want to expand over here for the most part. Hang on, remind me, was this world... Well, it's not terrible. It's not terrible, to be honest. It does actually have... Hang on, this world's got... How do I check that way? Wait, how do I... I want to check the special thing this world has, because this world has a special thing, and I think that means, um, like, plus physics, but reduced something? I forget. There's a thing anyway. Right, okay. That world might be worth a little bit of a look-see, possibly. But yeah, I can just, of course, yeah, throw down a whole bunch of frontier outposts, which I haven't really been doing so far, because there hasn't been a good spot to do it. So I'm just trying to find some good potential mining territory right now with all my science ships. And yeah, there's potentially some good stuff down over here. Also, apparently my sociologist could chat to those pirates we ran into. Yeah, sure, why not? They live down over here in the Shadow Nebula, so go on, why not? Right, colony ship is done and is also very expensive. So, time to get this thing. Ooh, lovely red sun there, by the way. That's lovely. Right, get that down over there. And probably this spot right here because, yeah, bonus energy and then bonus minerals down the line in those spots. Boom, that could be like that and... Beta Kylie Prime. Yeah, you know what? Sure, we'll go for it. And apparently we've just run into a uh, great big... Uh-oh. Wait, what? There's... That's that's a very, very, very big amount of piracy, actually. Are you guys just passing through? I really hope you guys are just passing through. Because that's, that's more than we are capable of dealing with right now. You guys, yeah, you're heading on towards Suta. Um... Do you, would you mind just leaving, actually? Because, yes, 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 citizens for freedom. I'm sure that's very important. We do have the slight, slight issue that um, I have no way of fighting you right now. Okay, they're just naffing on. This is good. I've decided this is worrying enough. It's time to start thinking about, yeah, upgrades and all sorts of bits and pieces. Invest some money in a level 2 place. We can get some Corvette shipyards down there. Pump out the Corvettes faster and cheaper. Build a fleet. Lovely. But yeah, I'm a bit worried that those guys are... I really hope they're just naffing straight on. Please don't attack my bases. There's actually quite a lot of money tied up in all of that. Oh, I feel like they're actually attacking my bases. Oh, go away, you stupid bastards. Right, okay. So they're... Yeah, they're just going to blow up all my stuff. And there is nothing I can do about that. Zemma Puck, friends. Would you mind coming and helping me with this? Because I am completely incapable of actually stopping these pirates. Meanwhile, the pirates down south have no interest in communicating either. Marvellous. Okay, so they've just trashed my place over here. And now, where are you going next precisely? Hang on, where are you off to? I don't know, but they're warping out somewhere. Hopefully off in this direction. No! No, they're heading straight over to... Okay, will you guys just naff off, please? This is not cool. Ooh, but they haven't damaged that. Okay. And now, now they're into Zemapuck space. So hopefully, the Zemapucks will bother to deal with them at this point. Because, yes, they are just causing more flipping trouble for mining stations. What a bunch of bastards. Oh, and I think we just saw the Zemapucks actually showing up there. The Zemapucks are... No, that's a science ship. I wouldn't send a science ship first, I'd send the navy first. Okay, we've got a small problem here, which is a fallen empire has just declared war. Which was 
very aggressive of them. Did I expand? I think I must have expanded way too close to them. Right, that... Yeah, that'll be the problem. I've expanded uh, too close to a fallen empire at this point. So, they're going to have something in the range of probably 300,000 strength. And I've got 149. So, on the plus side, I have probably got like a really nice opportunity right now to pick out a surrender flag. Like a really nice surrender flag. So how do we how do we surrender? Because I feel like we're surrendering at this point, actually. Because I really don't want the Zemmer Pucks to be absolutely flipping trashed being involved in this war. Alright, I am very happy to surrender if that's what we can do. Yes, I see. So they most definitely would prefer that planet to be cleansed. But what happens if rather than cleansing, I simply accept oh, they're not willing to accept that surrender. Okay, that's... that's mildly concerning. So! So, 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 so. Um... They're not willing to accept... Sur I hate a war when you're not willing to accept surrender. Right, so we definitely expanded too close to xenophobes. I forgot that was a thing that they were going to object to. It turns out they do. So... I guess that makes sense. Okay! Um, Beta Kylie Prime is probably not going to end up doing so hot, to be honest. I feel like maybe we should expand in other directions. Like, really other directions. Like, maybe over here. Over here seems like an excellent side of the galaxy. Like, as far away from where we currently are as possible, to be honest. I mean, the thing is, there's no point fighting. I'll just lose the fleet and have to rebuild it. So, uh, deploy the fleet just north up here. Get it out of the flipping way. If we have the opportunity to, get another flipping, yeah, colony ship down and expand over in this direction. This bit of space seems not too bad, to be honest, and it is further away from the bastards. And I believe this world was... Yeah, it's not bad. It'll do. Especially as our existing worlds are probably about to be burnt by some form of doom fleet. You know, I'm actually kind of glad that happened because that actually makes perfect sense. It's something that doesn't happen in current Stellaris. Like, these days, you can just basically go and settle pretty much right next to Fallen Empires. and They just don't seem to care. Spirits just don't want you actually... Uh-oh. I'm guessing... Yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing that transport fleets have something, something, something. What just happened there? Who are you guys precisely? What are you doing here? Oh, they're warping in and out too fast for me to even catch sight of them. Here we go. So this is... Honestly, this is not the most important thing in the world right now. Yep, so there's... There's the Fallen Empire. So, uh, 85,000 strength has just shown up there. Together with a lot of transport fleets. Honestly, you've probably bought more transport fleets than you strictly needed there. And... Wow, they just won instantly. <laughs> okay, so... That world has been pretty thoroughly purged. Got it. Well done. Are they also planning to come and, like, burn our capital? Because they might be planning to come and burn our capital too. I feel like that's not the end of it. Ah, here we go. They seem to be more in the mood for accepting surrender today. Great. Okay, so I'm willing to accept humiliation. That's fine. Unconditional surrender. Marvellous. So, what just actually happened, Jet? We've been humiliated. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so we sent our Strategos, our leader, over to sign the surrender. And she signed it. And then they just murdered her. Because they just felt like it. So that's... That's good. Right, okay. So, basically, we don't settle this world. Alright, we just don't. We settle over here instead. Over here is way better. On the plus side, they didn't even insist that we actually dismantle our fleet, which is lovely. Ooh, and we've run into someone else as well. Marvellous. More aliens floating around. They are... Ah, down here. Okay, so whoever this is in this part of the world, I think we've just found them. Okay, then over to the situation log, please. Let's figure out who those bastards are. But yeah, I think I'm definitely up for a great big mining area around here. This seems like a good bit of space, so uh, as soon as my construction ship's done building all of that, I'll bring it around here. We'll lock down some of this whole area, I think. Here we go, xenophobe spiritualists, hopefully willing to just leave me alone. Oh, they're quite flippin' large, though. Right, yes, they are... 
quite aggressively large. In fact, much larger than our neighbours to the north. Probably because they haven't actually been, yeah, facing off against each other in any way. So, uh, they've been able to expand a bit more freely. Okay, could be a little bit on the concerning side, all of that. Here we go, I'm feeling much better about this sort of a layout of an empire. So, you know, we've still got this lovely area up north, which we're slowly being squeezed out of admittedly, but I'm sure it's all fine. We've got, yeah, new planet going down here, building a frontier outpost out here, and then we can just focus on merging our empire together into one great big mega blob and everything will be fine. Here we go, frontier outpost locked down over here, flipping... Uh, Marvellous. Let's get some new stuff going on right there. Mining stations, get them in production. More and more minerals in. I think that will grow slightly, yes, into the north. My friend Will Cam, our new world, better luck. Where hopefully we will indeed have some better luck. That's starting to grow its borders too. So I'm hoping all of this might yet blob together. Oh, and better and flipping better. Frontier outpost upkeep can finally be 50% down. Because expansion is complete. And that means, uh, yeah, my world cap goes up from 3 to 5 for a plus 2. But as I say, no Ascension perks because none of the DLC is included and Ascension perks are part of the DLC. Though, I assume that will all be coming at some point or another. In fact, better luck is down already. That was nice and fast. Lovely. Food is just about stable for the time being. Let's get some flipping mines down in that case. Lovely. And let's get some more unity in. I want to be moving that on if you'd be so kind. As for auto perfection, yeah, we've already actually got the lovely little autochthonic monument down there. That is being manned. We could probably do with some more. Yeah, just get more and more minerals in. Focus on mineral collection. Screw it. I'm just going to get a whole bunch of basic mines down right now. Survey's been completed. For what? Habitable worlds. Apparently we found enough habitable worlds. Spot on. We've got ourselves... Oh, hello. There's... There's some very valuable worlds down here. Hello, that's lovely. Right, nothing I can really live on in those parts of the world, but... Then again, I did just get the thing that makes, uh, yeah, Frontier Outposts incredibly cheap. I could just set one down over there and basically say, Screw you, you stupid bastards. Try and stop me. And when I say try and stop me, last time someone did, it ended very badly for me. But these guys aren't a fallen empire, though they are still terrifyingly strong, yes... Oh, but here's the big one. Right here, destroyers are becoming available. Screw it. Get it done. Level 3 spaceport. Let's get some destroyers out on the field. Oh, and the world is starting to form up here. Right, okay, so... The bastards over here, the spiritualist xenophobes and the slaving xenophobes are now in a defensive pact to match up with my pact with these lovely, lovely, friendly guys to the north. Right, so... All of a sudden... Any form of war that begins there is going to be a problem. Gotcha. Oh, but I'll tell you what we do have. We do have a world right down over here. Hello. That's an ocean world and it's actually pretty decent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just meant to be. Screw you, you stupid massive red bastard. I settle where I want. Oh, and this is where life gets fun. Text to boost border range. Yep, get on with that. And apparently better luck might not actually be better luck because there's mysterious signals coming from the moon. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, this is going to be tight though. Because yes, the massive evil red blob empire is most definitely moving in this direction. But screw you all. I want to have this for me. So I just need to actually get the new colony ship down. It's coming in soon. It's all going to be fine. We are a bit lacking in food, however. Let's just quickly get, yeah, more actual farms down right over there, please. Okay, good news from the moon of better luck, at least. It's just a bunch of mining drones that don't seem particularly excited one way or the other. Apparently, we need to just keep an eye on them. They might well do something yet. Right, you, get in this flipping direction. Let's get this world settled, please. Spot on. One thing I'd forgotten, by the way, is how fast movement around the galaxy was back in 1.7. It's very interesting, because it definitely feels like sublight speed is very, very sluggish. But, bear in mind, unlike in New Solaris, where, say, if you wanted to go from here to here, you'd have to warp over to here, and then sublight over from here to over to here. But no, at this point, as long as you're by the edge of the actual system, you're fine. So maybe we can just warp in here and then warp straight back out again. So the colony ship has made it over to this spot incredibly quickly. 
So, uh, yeah, weirdly you can move like from system, 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 system in the blink of an eye, and then the moment you actually have to move across the system at sublight speed, everything slows down hugely. Which I guess makes sense, because faster than light is supposed to be pretty bloody fast. But still, it took me by surprise when I first saw it, because I'd forgotten that's how it used to work. Some good news though, apparently those little drones just helping to clear out some tile blockers, so that's lovely. Well, we got it down. The world of mine now is indeed officially mine now. And screw your perfect little spherical world. Uh, there we flip in go. More ocean worlds are uh, beautifully settled. So that's already down on the ground over there. Get some more mines constructed, please. We should have plenty of power for the time being. Oh yeah, this, this will flip in do the job. Oh, we've got some really nice stuff over here. A very mysterious little asteroid worth physics and sociology. Flippin' marvellous, I'm guessing something used to live in there. Good, good, good. This could all be very, very valuable indeed. In fact, you know what? Let's just actually get that down immediately. One single research station for plus three sociology and plus three physics is well worth it. Also, I'm growing quite attached to these little drones. Sometimes they go missing, sometimes they reappear. This time they've just decided to dump some free minerals on the moon. Marvellous. And then they went back to the moon. Free minerals, no complaints. I agree, game. So the slight problem we do have is, I'll admit, our empire's a bit all over the flipping place right now. It is slightly all over the place. Research that, by the way. That's fine. But... We're starting to get into some interesting technology here. Some interesting tech, traditions, all the sort of things that might be able to help out with that. Admittedly, if we did have Utopia, and thus the Ascension perks, there was actually one that I believe gave you just a free burst to your borders, back in the day when borders did actually grow over time. So, uh, sadly, we don't actually have that, because we don't actually have the Ascension perks. But there are other ways and means... I'll speak of the devil. I think this is the moment I've been waiting for. Traditions are available. Now I'm done with expansion, so I can open a brand new tree. And while I'm very tempted by prosperity, supremacy back in these days gave you border range plus 20% automatically just as an adoption. So I think we're going to be kicking off with that. Yes, let's just get that done. And... There we go, hang on. Let's just let that update, please. Oh, that's better. Mighty, mighty otters. In fact, actually, I believe now, yep, we have now taken this system back because I've never been sure whether I liked this system or not, but it was kind of fun that, yeah, border pressure meant you could just basically steal territory off your neighbours, including your own allies, without there being a war, just by virtue of the fact that the borders happen to shift. Technically, it didn't make much sense, but it was a fun system. I do kind of miss it. Tragically, I think the drones are now dead. They woke up one final time and decided to basically kamikaze into the planet. Luckily, not really killing any of mine or damaging my infrastructure, but still, we might want to look into what actually caused them to explode. Oh, flip! I think the exact research and... Oh, bloody hell, the drones are also doing something again. Hang on! What's going on? Oh, some of the drones survived. I like the drones. The drones are good. Or not so much, actually. We still don't know why most of them destroyed themselves. And uh, yeah, the ones that survived have just gone missing. Fascinating. Well, I've never had this event chain before. It's quite cool. But yes, we just actually picked up. Hang on. Uh, that will be the Galactic Ambitions tech. Another 20%. So, we've actually managed to unify some parts of the Empire. Not all of it, but like, a bit. I will say, playing 1.7 again has definitely given me a renewed appreciation for the new version of Solaris. Particularly 2.2, with the advent of alloys and consumer goods and all of that stuff. Because... Uh, yeah, ultimately, this game in its current form, back at 1.7, it was just a case of gather minerals as quickly as you can, because minerals just did everything. It built the ships, it built the buildings, it paid for literally everything. So basically, everything in the end boiled down to, are you maximising the number of minerals coming in right now? No? Well, then you'd better do that, you stupid bastards. Oh, and this is very sad. Just outside Xenophobe space, there's actually primitives. I love primitives. Keeping an eye on primitives is one of my favourite things to do. Who are you guys precisely? Hang on, I need to know more about you. Iron Age Civilization. Lovely. Yeah, nothing much going on there, to be honest. We should just be able to 
walk straight in if we wanted to actually take it over. Yeah, not much at all. Though I will say, I like the new army screen they've done for this, actually. With the orbit and the atmosphere and the ground. That's actually pretty cool. In fact, yeah, we can do with that in the main game of Soros. That actually looks really nice. Though it also does vaguely hint at the possibility of... Uh, I wonder if this indicates what they're planning for the future. Because that would vaguely imply, you know what, forces up in orbit can actually support the ground forces, which right now they can't. They can bomb the ground forces when the invasion's not happening, but the moment the invasion happens, they just stop. Meanwhile, an atmosphere level would suggest maybe some form of, like, you know, not spacefaring fighter jets or something that might be able to shoot down incoming drop pods. Okay, this could be an interesting sign of things to come, because... Yeah, ground invasions could definitely still do with a bit of work, even in the far-flung sci-fi future of Stellaris 2.2. And there's strange little lizard folks who are apparently very good at sociology. Excellent. Maybe at some point we shall eat them. And we finally got an explanation for my good friends the drones, who are apparently unwitting pawns in an elaborate scheme set up by an unknown faction. Potentially particularly old and clever pirate syndicates. They must have found the drones drifting through space and done what we could not, modified them. Well, not as impressive as it sounds, all they did was introduce self-contained alien technology into the drones. The fact is these alien pirates possess a technological know-how far in advance of our own, at least in certain areas. Ah, I see, the drones are fattening up the colony. The pirates are going to come and raid the place at some point. Okay, which will apparently happen inside the next two years. So... We could actually capture the drones and send them to destroy their would-be masters. Uh, dismantle the drones. Oh, oh, interesting. Or oh, let them come. Oh, flip. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Right, well, the sneaky thing to do would surely be to send them back. But no, I say let them come. Build up the fleet. Two years, that's happening. Right, so we need to be ready at Wilcom. Got it. Okay, I will say, however, yeah, the ship designer is particularly crowded and a bit visually not pleasing. That's definitely the case. Those are some very small icons right there. Right, Tankwood says they're coming with Corvettes. That means it's time to get some destroyers out on the field. And when we hit mid-2233, that's when we need to be ready for these bastards. Though then again, actually... Thinking about it just for a second. Clear out some of that money. We don't need to actually commit all this money up front. Get the money back. Because another good thing to do would be... Better luck. Give it a spaceport to defend itself. Okay, so that's currently being built. That's going to take a year to do. So that will be done before the pirates show up. This is marvellously good news. Some slight issues with the fact that, yeah, my new fleet needs to be powered, which we can't actually afford to do right now. Right, overwrite that with some lovely basic power. There we go. Screw that little one mineral there. We'll just have an upgraded power plant right there. Everything's going to be fine. We've got enough spare power in the kitty. We can do this. Oh, perfect timing. Ship build speed increased by 15%. Naval capacity up by 10. Yep, supremacy, I like you. Okay, it's the end of 2233. Time to get the last few handful of Corvettes out that we can. Because, yeah, we can actually afford a new one of them once every two months. That they only actually take, yeah, a month to build. So... Yeah, one more, then it's time for us to move out. I believe the spaceport is ready at this point, so uh, as soon as we hit February, build that. It'll be done in March, and then we move out the fleet, and life will be good. There we go, job done. All right, there we go, and uh, the fleet is up to a strength of 633. Not perfect, but it's going to have to do the flipping job. And that's not where we're going. We're going over here. Right, you guys move over in that direction. Better luck, I believe, your spaceport should at this point... Yes, your spaceport is ready. Good. So it is equipped with a weapon, which is lovely. Uh, nothing else we can do, though, unfortunately, no. All right, the fleet is now on the move, and that means it can start now warping very fast from system to system. There we go. So it's ready to start defending itself and uh, it's about two years. So these guys should be showing up any moment now. Any flipping moment. Just in case, let's actually get some reinforcements out here. Yeah, one more destroyer. Just in case. There we go. Those guys now enter the orbit of better luck. 
which has a beautiful, slightly... Okay, admittedly, it is a giant penis. I have actually just built a giant space penis, and... It's strength 124! Our fleet wasn't even required. Our fleet was not required. Instead, we just destroyed them. I built destroyers for this! I built destroyers specially, but we didn't need it because the massive, massive chrome space penis. <laughs> Paradox. Alright, now, I don't mean to cast aspersions, but you knew this looked like a giant penis. You knew. You 100% knew when you designed this that this was just a giant space penis. And you put it in the game anyway, and for that... I salute you, you magnificent bastards. And this could actually be useful in some ways. We get ourselves, yep, yeah, traces of components we have not unlocked yet. That is, I believe Chemical Thrusters is new. Is the radar new? I don't know if the radar's new. Actually, those might all be tier one stuff. It might not be that useful at all, but who knows? It's probably worth a little bit of science at least. Still, Better Luck has indeed had better luck than Beta Kylie Prime. Beta Kylie Prime definitely met a bit of a sad fate, and uh, the Empire is very, very close to being unified right now. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I think you get the point. This here is Stellaris Console Edition, and uh, it's really interesting. Which is, it's lovely to go back and just play Stellaris 1.7, because the stuff that's dropped out of the game, like the Frontier Outpost, I do actually kind of miss. There was some fun stuff there. In some ways, though I agree that the new system in 2.0 and 2.2 is definitely better. I do kind of miss the Frontier Outpost and just basically putting down a great big aggressive flip you blob right on the border of my neighbours. That was quite fun. Meanwhile, the controls work honestly better than they have any flipping right to. It's still a bit awkward, but this is honestly probably about as smooth as you're ever going to get with a grand strategy game on a console. It does actually work pretty well for the most part. I'm impressed with that. I will say it's only 2233, so 33 years after the game begins, and uh, there have not been a major war, fallen empires haven't broken up, there's not been a major event, and of course if they're planning to introduce the DLCs, there will be wars in heaven and whatever in the future. I have seen the odd stutter, and this is not a huge galaxy, it's only 600 stars, there's only 10 empires in it, and it's already starting to stutter a bit, so... Uh, I can't comment on how good the performance is in the late game, but I suspect it definitely will stutter a little bit because an Xbox One X is already slightly struggling with the early game stuff. So yeah, that's definitely an outstanding question. But I'll say, I think it works better than I feared it might do. This is actually a very impressive attempt to port a grand strategy game onto the console. Sadly, of course, we don't have the DLC, so... I suspect in its current form, though this is a fantastic way to learn to play the game and your first game will be fantastic, there's probably limited replayability for the moment. They're going to have to introduce some of the DLC stuff just to actually, yeah, get this game to have a little bit more in that respect. But I'll say I'm impressed. Not enough to go over to this version. Absolutely, the PC version runs better. It's easier to control. It's definitely vastly easier with a keyboard and mouse. This is not a superior alternative, but for a console edition, it's as good as it could be. If you've ever wanted to try out Solaris, but you've not got a decent PC, you've only got the console, this might well be worth a look. It's interesting, and if nothing else, it's a fascinating experiment, and I'll be keeping a very close eye on how well it sells, because if it does do well, that opens the door to all sorts of stuff potentially trying to make the move over to console. That could be fascinating stuff indeed, so I really hope it does do well. I really, really do. I'll be keeping an eye on it. We shall see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Stellaris Console Edition. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> <laughs> the Romans touched me.